everyone. Uh, thanks for tuning in today. I'm really excited to show you some easy ideas of molecular biology. Labs you and your students can do right at home, all using fluorescence as a powerful tool for explorations, biotech skill building, and even the visualization of complete biological processes. Uh, but first up, I am Dr. Ali Huang, and I'm with Mini PCR Bio. Uh, for those of you who don't know who we are, we make accessible and affordable biotech equipment as well as innovative labs. Uh, we're always looking to bring teachers something new and to visualize molecular biology in ways you probably weren't able to before. So today, I'll be showing a few activities we've developed that are simple to do at home, but engage you and your students in real scientific processes, all using fluorescence as the main tool to do so. So before we get into what fluorescence is and how we can use it to visualize biology, I just wanted to acknowledge how difficult this past year has been for teachers and the world of education in general. We can't even begin to imagine all the struggles and all the stress you teachers have been going through right now, uh, but we've been doing our best to support you with resources and ideas to help make remote teaching go just a little more smoothly. Uh, this includes all of our portable biotech equipment that is both classroom and home friendly, including the P51 fluorescence viewer that I'll show a little bit more of later. Uh, coming up with at home versions of our popular classroom activities that you can easily demo to your students or have them do at home. Uh, Genes in Space, our free science competition where students design experiments to study biology on the space station. And tons and tons of free resources readings and study questions on topics like CRISPR, webinars, and videos that cover topics like PCR or virtual demos of our hands-on labs like the one we'll be doing today. So for today's workshop, I'll be mostly talking about our uh, at-home labs, and I'll be focusing on our P51 at-home lab, but our micropipetting at-home lab here is also great for students to practice pipetting, make fun colorful art while doing so, and our BioBits at-home here is great for visualizing the central dogma and to be timely to the current vaccine news, understand what mRNA is and how it works. The great thing about today's activities is that they, that I'll be showing today is that they span all levels uh, from simple explorations of things you can find around the house to visualizing elements of biological processes all the way to building biotech skills like pipetting and creating quantitative standards and experiments. So whether you are a middle school teacher or teaching at the AP biology level, there's something for everyone. And even with the most simple activities that we'll be doing today, they still really engage students to think about important topics in biology and the techniques and ideas, they're not too different than what's actually being used by scientists and researchers. So I mentioned a few times that we'll be using fluorescence as a tool in these activities. Uh, if you ever looked at things like a driver's license under a black light and saw a glow, that's fluorescent. Fluorescence is a phenomenon that is everywhere. Uh, for example, many molecules found in nature fluoresce. Uh, some organisms like jellyfish shown here have evolved to use fluorescence to their advantage, possibly to attract prey. And scientists have also harnessed such molecules to visualize structures and processes that are otherwise undetectable. Uh, it's an essential phenomenon that's behind many important biotechnologies, but it's actually really easy to investigate and explore this idea right from your own home. So briefly, this is how fluorescence works. And as an example on this slide, I'm showing a molecule here called fluorescein, uh, which is a fluorescent molecule that's found in things like highlighters to make them look super bright. Fluorescent molecules like fluorescein absorb light energy from specific wavelengths of light and then release some of that energy back out as light of a different color with a longer wavelength. The fluorescent molecules you'll look at in these activities are excited by blue wavelengths of light and then emit green, yellow, or red light. And in all of our activities today, we'll be using this little cardboard visualizer to see fluorescence. Um, I'm actually going to switch to video mode so I can show it off. So this is our P51 fluorescence viewer. Um, all you do is you open the top and you put your tubes in here. And when you turn it on, 
you can see a blue light that will shine up on the tubes. Um, that is the blue light that will excite any fluorescent molecules that are in the tubes. And in the front, there's a colored acrylic filter that blocks out the blue light. So you can easily observe uh, what color light is being emitted as fluorescence from the molecules in the tubes. So to show you, here are the tubes, putting them in the top here. And yeah, there are fluorescent molecules in the tubes, so you can see them light up right there in the box. So, pretty cool. The P51 fluorescence viewer um, is great because it's cheap, it's reusable, it's easy to use. Uh, we have all sorts of labs that just require this in a pipette. So it's actually really easy to do in classrooms or homes. Uh, plus it's appropriate for all levels, like I mentioned before, uh, from basic lab skills to advanced biotech techniques. And in this time of remote learning, this is something you could use to do a demo for your students from your own home like what I'm doing, or you could even distribute supplies using our conveniently packaged P51 at home kit and have your students do the experiments themselves from home. Um, as an aside, uh, we call it the P51 as a tribute to Rosalind Franklin's Photograph 51, uh, the X-ray crystallography image that contributed a lot to our understanding of biology. So similarly, today we'll be using that just this little cardboard box to open up a whole world of biology to your students and have them thinking like a scientist. So most of the activities we'll be looking at today can be found as part of our P51 at home kit. Uh, the kit comes with everything you need to do, everything you need to do the activities, a P51, transfer pipettes, tubes, and everything else you need can be found around your house or backyard. If you're looking for easy hands-on labs that cover real-world biological topics or biotech topics, uh, then this might be a good option. So let's get into it. The first activity is called Home Glowin and introduces students to the phenomenon of fluorescence, uh, how scientists can use fluorescence to test and learn about different compounds, and even allows students to form questions and design their very own experiments in a simple but effective visual format. We'll be using the P51 fluorescence viewer to test household items like honey, olive oil, or milk for fluorescence. Uh, many molecules are naturally fluorescent, but we actually don't notice them because we don't view the molecules under the right lighting conditions. So this activity will allow students to explore uh, the world around them, discover what in their house is fluorescent, and even design their own investigative experiment into the biological reasons of why certain substances glow the way they do. All right, so let's jump back to video mode. All right, so hopefully you can see my P51 setup here. So I've already gone through my kitchen and taken some samples of various substances there. Uh, you can just use a transfer pipette like this one I'm showing here to take a little bit of uh, the substances and put them in the little tubes that are provided. Um, so, and then after you do that, all you have to do is just look at them in the P51. So let's take a look at what I've already grabbed from my kitchen. Turn this on so we can start putting tubes in there one by one. All right, so first I have just a tube here with water in it as a negative control. So we know what a non-fluorescent tube looks like and we have a baseline to compare to. So when I pop that in, all right, we don't really see anything glowing, which makes sense because there's really nothing in that tube except water. All right, so next I'm gonna put in a tube that has some olive oil in it. And as we do that, oh, so you can kind of see that. Let me get this a little closer here. Yeah, so you can see that uh, it's fluorescing red. So that means there's something in the olive oil uh, that's fluorescent, absorbing the blue light and emitting that energy back out as the red color that we can see. Uh, just as a comparison, I also have a tube of canola oil instead of olive oil. And when we pop that in there, uh, we can see that's really similar to the water. There's really no fluorescence in that tubes. And it makes it even more obvious that there is something in the olive oil that is fluorescing. I also have uh, two tubes here, one of ketchup and one of mustard. And when I put that in, uh, we can see that the ketchup is kind of a orangish red fluorescent color. Um, and the mustard is really bright. It's like a nice yellow green fluorescent color. Um, let's see, I also have some honey 
and so you see the tube of honey here and once I put that in uh, wow that is pretty bright fluorescent green as well um, and finally uh, I have a little tube of soy milk and we put that in we see it's also fluorescing green um, again these last three here are also fluorescent uh, they're just emitting a different color of fluorescent light than say the oil, olive oil or the ketchup and yeah so that is pretty cool to see yeah that is just stuff that I grabbed around my house and put them in here but yeah didn't know that this stuff was fluorescent until I tried it out here in the P51 all right, and in case that fluorescence didn't show that well in camera, um, I do have a picture here of what the tubes look like to me. Um, again, really fun seeing all those different colors just from random things I was grabbing around my kitchen earlier. Um, and now you may be thinking, you know, big deal, we just put a bunch of foods in tubes and looked at them under uh, blue light to see them glow. I mean, and while that might seem pretty simple, it actually provides the foundation for students to take it uh, a step further and actually design an investigative experiment into why they saw the fluorescence they did. And ex as an example of a question they can explore, uh, here's one cool thing we discovered while developing this lab. Uh, the fancier the olive oil is, the more red it appears. Um, so at home, we use a super cheap generic brand of olive oil, which is the one that I showed. Uh, but my coworker got me some nice olive oil for a holiday gift swap. And as you can see, the fancy oil they got me is much redder than my cheap stuff. And you can actually look into this. The reason for this is biological. And it's something that the students can actually research, learn more about, and design an experiment around. The red fluorescence, for example, that we're seeing in the olive oil is due to their chlorophyll content. And I'm actually going to talk about chlorophyll in the next activity more and why it's super, super important. Uh, but just for this activity, the higher quality olive oil is processed in a way where their chlorophyll content is maintained, while the cheaper olive oil is processed in a way that ends up removing a lot of that chlorophyll content. There's even a paper published by three Italian scientists describing this and how you can measure an olive oil's quality based on its fluorescence output. So again, while this activity that I just showed may seem really simple, you know, putting kitchen items into test tubes and looking at them, it's actually not too far off from what people in the olive oil industry are doing to check their oil quality. Maybe the next time you buy all fancy olive oil from the store, uh, you could use this activity to check out if you're getting ripped off or not. Um, but in all seriousness, this is a great example of how you can have your students use these initial explorations to come up with a question that they want to investigate further, have them do some background research to come up with a hypothesis, uh, and design an experiment to test a hypothesis and record their findings. It's simple, it's easy to do, and it's really great to introduce students to the concept of fluorescence and how it can be used to investigate real-world biological ideas. So, speaking of fancier olive oil having more chlorophyll and therefore appearing more red, the next activity will have your students looking at chlorophyll itself from plants in their backyards or from their kitchen. Uh, chlorophyll is a green pigment that is found in plants that captures or absorbs energy from the sun. This energy is then passed through the other molecules in the chloroplast membrane here, through the electron transport chain, and ultimately through a series of different reactions to convert CO2, carbon dioxide, into sugars. Uh, that's how photosynthesis works, which is a really super important biological process because you know life on Earth wouldn't exist without chlorophyll. Um, and now I'm going to show you an activity where you can see how this important molecule works. Again, with just a P51 viewer and the materials in the at-home kit and around your house. So typically, chlorophyll is absorbing the energy from the sun, but that energy is immediately used by the plant. This activity is going to look at what happens if the chlorophyll was not a part of the plant. What will happen to that energy it absorbs if it's not being used in the electron transport chain? And again, in this case, we'll use fluorescence to investigate what might be happening in this biological process of photosynthesis. All right, switching back to video mode here. Uh, so you are just going to take any plant. Uh, the lab specifically calls for spinach, 
but a leaf from outside will do, or you can use any leafy green, actually. Um, tender herbs use, uh, tend to work pretty well. So I just plucked a leaf here off, off of my basil plant. So, very simple. Um, all I'm going to do is going to take this leaf, and I'm going to pop it into my tube here. All right, so it's in the tube. And next, I'm going to add some acetone to this tube. Um, for the acetone, I'm using a nail polish remover. It just costs a few bucks from the drugstore. And what I'm going to do is unscrew this. Um, I'm going to use my transfer pipe pet here to transfer some of this acetone. It's sticking it in there. Into this tube to cover the leaf. I'll bring it down, down so you can actually see it. All right, so there is some acetone in there. All right, screw the slid back on. All right, so now after doing that, I'm gonna take this plastic grinder that also comes with the kit, and I'm gonna just mash up the sleeve in the acetone. All right, so I'll do that for a few seconds here. Um, keep mashing up the leaf until you can see that the green, this liquid is slowly starting to turn green. All right, so that is the chlorophyll pigment the green pigment of the chlorophyll, um, getting into the acetone and being extracted. All right, I think that's pretty good. Next, I'm going to take my transfer pipette again, and I'm going to pull up some of that nice green liquid. Yep, you can see it's in there. All right, shut this tube, move it to the side, and I'm actually going to add this green liquid into one of these little smaller tubes so we can take a look at it in our P51. All right, so that's in there. Cool, so let's take a look at this under fluorescence. All right, so here's my P51 again. Turn it on. So as a negative control, I have a tube right here uh, that just has acetone in it with no leaf. So I'll put that in there so we don't really see anything. Uh, I also actually have a tube here. You can see there's an unmashed whole leaf in there. So we can just compare the chlorophyll when it's intact in the leaf versus when it's isolated in the acetone. So when I put it in there, um, there seems to be something fluorescing in there, but it's not very bright. Uh, and now for my third tube, I have the isolated chlorophyll and acetone here. And when I put it in, whoa, look at that. That is super, super, super red uh, compared to those other tube tubes. Um, so yeah, that is definitely some red fluorescence that we can see there. Pretty obvious, even just coming off on camera there. I think that's super awesome. So, you know, what's going on here? Uh, by mashing up this leaf in acetone, the chlorophyll is no longer in the electron transport chain. So when we shine a blue light on it, like we're doing in the P51 right now, it's absorbing that light and releasing it back out as red fluorescence. Um, the intact leaf, that middle tube right here, uh, it's doing the same thing. It's absorbing the blue light, but since it's still a part of the leaf in the electron transport chain, the energy is passed through that instead, and we don't really see it as red fluorescence. So let's give you guys one last look at that really cool red fluorescence. And yeah, I'm going to switch the slides and just review what we just saw. So that was fun to look at, but it really shows students how chlorophyll functions as an essential biological molecule. Uh, when it's intact in a leaf, as shown here, it again absorbs l energy from light and then passes that energy on uh, to convert CO2 into sugars. That's why we didn't see much in the tube of just the leaf. The energy is not being released as fluorescence. On the other hand, when we had the chlorophyll isolated from the leaf and acetone, uh, the energy absorbs uh, the energy it absorbs from light instead is released as the bright red fluorescent light that you saw, because there is no electron transfer chain for it to pass through. Uh, you can actually have your students take this activity one step further. Uh, for example, by looking at the chlorophyll content in changing fall colored leaves. As leaves change color, as shown in this picture, picture here, uh, they're losing their green pigment. And so because of that, that, that is because they're losing their chlorophyll content, which you actually can measure in the P51 shown here. And again, while this may seem very simple, uh, botanists actually use red fluorescence as a measure of efficiency of the electron transport chain. So again, this activity is very similar to an actual tool that people use when looking at chlorophyll. 
And again, it's such an important molecule, and it's, I think it's really awesome that there's such an easy fun, and fun activity that we can do to visualize and learn more about it. The P51 at Home Kit also comes with one more activity where students look at highlighter markers in the P51. Uh, highlighters, like these shown here, contain a fluorescent molecule called fluorescein, which is what makes them look so bright and neon, especially when you compare them to regular non-fluorescent markers. Uh, so in this activity, students take these highlighters and also non-highlighter markers, color the inside of tubes, and if they f see if they fluoresce, and if they do fluoresce, they can use this chart here to estimate which are the wavelengths of light that the fluorescent molecules in the highlighter absorbs and emits. This is a great activity, again, for demonstrating biological concepts. In this case, getting into the details of the specific wavelengths of light involved in the fluorescence we see, how you know absorption and emission functions, and asking students to experiment with those ideas. The first two activities I did showed how fluorescence can be used as a tool to investigate and observe impo important biological processes, and when scientists use fluorescence as a tool, they often measure in specific wavelengths. So this final activity in the P51 at home kit is great for you know wrapping up the trio of activities to show students how scientists can quantitate the fluorescence that they qualitatively use, or that they qualitatively saw in the other two activities. But actually for today, um, I thought I'd actually switch gears and demonstrate an activity that's more focused on biotech skill building instead with our intro to fluorescence lab. Uh, it also involves highlighters and the fluorescent fluorescein chemical, but instead focuses more on biotech skill building. Things like how to use a micropipette and how to set up serial dilutions for creating semi-quantitative standards in experiments. Again, Real techniques used by real scientists in the lab. This lab, uh, Intro to Fluorescence, is a standalone lab, separate from the P51 at home kit, but still uses the P51 as a way to visualize fluorescence. So in this lab, students will highlight a word with a highlighter and then wash that highlighting solution off into a tube and then compare the tube to a standard curve of fluorescein they made to determine how much fluorescein it took to highlight that word. So this lab comes with concentrated fluorescein, which again is a molecule that is brightly fluorescent that's commonly found in highlighters. With this uh, concentrated fluorescein, students can create a series dilution of known concentrations so they can compare their unknown samples to it. So how you do that is you take some amount of this concentrated fluorescein, put it in a new tube, and dilute it with some buffer. And since you know how much buffer and how much of the original fluorescein you put in, you can calculate the concentration of this new solution. And then you do it again and again until you have a dilution series of known concentrations that you can compare your unknown to. So as an example, uh, here is a 2x dilution series that I made ahead of time. And just to review again how the series dilution works, uh, I put 50 nanograms per microliter of fluorescein in this first tube. Then in the next tube, I put 20 microliters of that same fluorescein at that concentration with 20 microliters of buffer, creating a 25 nanogram per microliter concentration cutting it in half essentially, it's two times more dilute than the first tube. Then I took 20 of tube 2 and then added to 20 of buffer in the third tube, cutting it down in half again for 12.5. Repeating that until I, again and again and again and again until I have seven tubes, each half as dilute as the previous tube to create a series of dilution of known concentrations. And visually, just looking at this picture, you can see the dilution, right? It gets dimmer the more dilute it gets. And again, this is a really super important skill to know and be able to do in lab. Uh, for example, when scientists are trying to determine if someone's blood sample has a certain amount of a compound, they need to compare it to a known standard curve of known concentration so they can figure out how much of the unknown that they have. All right. So I'm going to switch back to video mode and let's sh do this lab together. All right. So I am going to take this uh, fluorescent highlighter here uh, and I'm going to just grab a piece of paper. Uh, I have a 
parking notice thing here. So I'm just going to grab this uh, and highlight uh, a word. So I'm highlighting the word availability here. Okay, so you can see that's highlighted. Um, I'm going to use a pair of scissors and I'm just going to quickly just cut out this word. All right, there we go. So you can see my word is highlighted and it's cut out here. So I am now going to pop up this tube open and get my word in here. And then to this tube, um, I'm going to add some buffer. And we're going to use this buffer to wash off the highlighter fluid from there. Just give me a sec to pipette it in. All right, so I'm going to use my pipette as well. Move it so you can actually see it. There we go. All right, so you can see that the word is nicely squished up there. All right. All right, so now I'm just going to flick it and shake it to try to get as much of that highlighter off the paper as possible. Do that for a few seconds. Um, yeah, so the highlighting fluid is now being washed off by the buffer. All right, give it a couple more flicks. All right, I'm going to use my pipette tip to try to get this piece of paper out of here. All right, I'm just going to get this off camera real quick. All right, there we go. So we can see just by looking, we don't even have to stick this in the P51. We can kind of just see with the naked eye that there is definitely some fluorescent solution to this tube. And when we turn our P51 on and stick the tube in, we can see that is uh, really, really bright. In fact, it's so bright, it's actually blowing out the brightness settings on my iPhone here. Um, so you actually might, it actually might not seem that bright to you, uh, but trust me, I'm looking at it by eye, and it's actually, uh, if we take my dilution series that I made, so this is the 2x dilution series that I just showed on the slides before, so you can see it's going from brightest to dimmest here, and when we put this in, it may not be obvious, again, because my brightness settings are being a little funky on my phone, but just by looking at it eye, this is actually way too bright for this dilution series. Uh, this tube is actually brighter than the brightest tube that we actually have. Um, this is probably going to happen when you do the lab, so it actually presents a nice extra challenge for your students to think about using serial dilutions. What can we do to make this unknown sample here actually fall within the series here. So what I did is I actually took a bit of this unknown solution out of this tube and diluted it down. Uh, ahead of time, I actually took some of another sample that I set up earlier and diluted it down in buffer here. So it's one tenth of the original concentration, meaning I took two microliters of the original sample and put it in 18 microliters of buffer in this tube. Two in a total of 20 is 10%. And as we can see, when we put it into the P51 next to the standard curve, uh, we see, yep, it's dimmer, and it definitely looks like it will fall along this curve. And in fact, I'm looking at it right now, and I think it's going to go between 4 and 5. So let me switch up my order here. So here's my dilution curve. I put a space between 4 and 5, and when I put this sample tube in, uh, we see, yep, it falls along between 4 and 5 on the series dilution. So, we know where it falls in the series dilution curve. Uh, what does this mean for calculating how much fluorescein is in there? If I go back to the slides. All right, so again, here is the 2x dilution series that I set up. Started with 50 nanograms per microliter in the first tube, and again, each subsequent tube had half of the concentration. Uh, we saw that our tube of unknown sample fell between four and tube four and five uh, right here. So from this, we know that that unknown tube has a concentration that's between three-ish and six-ish nanograms per microliter. But wait, remember, that tube was actually diluted down by a factor of 10. So we actually have to remember to calculate that in. Our original tube was 10 times more concentrated than the sample tube uh, that it fell that actually fell between tubes four and five. So our original tube, by my calculations, by just timesing it by 10, actually has a concentration that's closer between 30-ish and 60-ish nanograms per microliter. 
Um, and you can even take it further of your students and challenge them to calculate the number of molecules in their unknown tube. It's a great exercise to practice what I like to call lab math, which is super useful when it comes to biotech. Overall, this is a great lab that involves good pipetting practice to build your micropipetting skills and a lot of use of serial dilutions and thinking about how to use known concentrations to determine unknown concentrations. Again, a really important biotech and lab skills to have, uh, getting your students in the mindset of a scientist. And even though it's not part of our P51 at home kit, it's still a super easy standalone lab to do at home. You just need the pipette and the P51 to get your students started with building these important biotech skills. All right, so that was a nice overview looking at three labs that are easy to do right in your own home to investigate fluorescence and how it can be used in biology and biotech. And again, the P51 at home kit comes with everything you need to explore fluorescence in your kitchen or in your backyard, learn about what it is, how it can be used to illustrate biological processes. Um, you know, very simple, but surprisingly similar to what's done in real labs. And then for a lab that dives into more biotech skill building, again, the intro to fluorescence lab can be used to practice micropipetting in the use of serial dilutions and standards. Uh, these labs represent a variety of activities that we have for anyone from the middle school level all the way up to advanced high school when all cover really important biology concepts and or biotech techniques. All of these labs are easily imp implementable during remote learning. Uh, there are a lot of options for you depending on what your teaching situation is. You know, you can use our free lab demo webinars like the one I'm doing today um, to show your students. Uh, you can you yourself do a live demo of your lab, of the lab for your students uh, using your webcam, kind of similar to what I'm doing for you today. Or you can even send materials home to each one of your students to do the labs together. Um, as shown in this Google Meet classroom here earlier last year in the school years of them doing one of our at-home labs. And yeah, we've made the at-home labs as easy to distribute all the reagents as possible and equipment needed for your students to do this. So I just wanted to end with providing some more resources for at-home remote learning. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the talk, we also have a lot of free resources. Uh, we've been creating webinars that are full demonstrations of many of our labs, um, including the one today, or educational webinars that cover popular topics like what are mRNA vaccines against COVID-19. Uh, feel free to use these videos as reference for how to demo the labs yourself to your students or even show them to your students directly, like I mentioned before. Uh, you can go to this link that I'm showing on the slide here uh, to get all these resources, plus other resources like readings or worksheets to use during remote learning. Um, and all the curriculum that goes with our labs, the teacher guide, the student guide, the classroom slides, these are all also free to download from our website. So you can actually look through the entire lab before deciding you know, whether or not you want to get it for your classroom. And yeah, I just showed you a couple of activities that you can do with your P51 today. Um, if you're looking for other fun activities to do with your P51, um, I would definitely go to that link that I just showed you before and check out some of these webinars that we've done on some of our other P51 labs. I have one webinar covering how you can use the P51 to look at DNA structure as well as enzyme activity. So there's one webinar for that. Uh, there is one webinar covering our popular Central Dogma Lab, how you can visualize transcription and translation in real time. And we also have a webinar covering qPCR, uh, what quantitative PCR is and how it's being applied for things like COVID diagnostics. And you saw these two labs here that I did today, the chlorophyll lab, as well as the intro to fluorescence labs. Uh, and beyond just our P51 fluorescence viewer, we also have tons of other labs available um, with our other equipment. We have a lot of labs where students, you know, amplify DNA using PCR and then analyze that DNA using gel electrophoresis, ranging from kind of pre-canned crime labs up to labs where students actually amplify and analyze their very own DNA samples, which I think is super cool. 
And yeah, thanks so much for paying attention today. Uh, glad to have you all here. Um, if you have any questions, again, feel free to contact us. Um, my moderators in the chat, my colleagues there, can put our contact information there. Feel free to email us if you have any questions about how to implement any of these labs uh, in your classroom or you have questions about the content of the labs, anything. We're just here to help. So again, thanks for tuning in, and I hope to see you at one of our other future webinars. All right. Have a good day. Bye.